Hi everyone, my name is Ivan Grove. I am an independent research agronomist and I'm part of the team which carried out the trials looking into establishing trap crops for potato cyst nematode control. A little bit of background. Innovative Farmers is part of a Dutchy Future Farming program. Um, the network itself is backed by a team from LEAF, Innovation for Agriculture, the Organic Research Centre and the Soil Association. The Innovative Farmers Network is a network of growers and farmers running their own trials based on their own ideas in order to overcome particular farming challenges. Uh, you can get small grants to help you actually look into this and also additional help from uh, people like myself who are used to carrying out this type of work. Our project was establishing potato cyst nematode trap crops. Um, for anyone that doesn't know a lot about them, potato cyst nematodes are significant pests of potatoes. We've got some big issues now. We've lost Vidate, one of the main nematicides. Um, so the cultural controls are not very helpful in terms of the viability of growing potatoes. <coughs> Excuse me. An alternative control option to these um, potato cyst nematodes though, are trap crops, which stimulate nem nematode hatching, but prevent multiplication. Therefore, they reduce the populations. So our challenge then was that the fact that these trap crops are not native to the UK and they're ideally planted in mid-May, um, so a little bit like a maize crop. But that conflicts then with growing cash crops because these crops don't generate income. So you'd arguably have to lose uh, a cash crop. In 2020, we had some trials uh, that looked at the feasibility of planting in late June after forage cereals and also later on in late July. Um, and we basically found that, yes, we could achieve it in late June, but not, we couldn't get any crops to grow later on than that. Um, you have to plant them around about one centimetres. We're looking at two trap crop species, Solanum sisymbryfolium and Solanum scabrum. Um, and they grew well on the one side, but failed on a, a second site where it was on a colder clay soil. 2021 then, we looked to carry on this work, but we wanted to see if we're adding a little bit of seedbed nitrogen would actually help to the actual uh, establishment of the crops. So we had three trial sites in North Shropshire again, and we used a randomised three or six replicate design with plots about 10 metres long and four metres wide. Uh, one site at Edgemond, we investigated not only establishing the crop, but also the effects of the crops on the PCM populations. So the three trial sites were planted with commercial machinery, which is one of the ideas. You don't need specialist equipment to do it. And if you look at the right-hand side, you can actually see, to give it a basic idea of how they're actually laid out. So right, laid out properly in a way we can statistically analyse things. In terms of the results, the crop establishment, basically all three sites, they were quite slow to establish, which is not unusual. Um, by the time we got to 30 days after planting, there was very little emergence. Um, by the time we got to 52 days, so sort of well into the second month, we started to see some more emergence, more establishment. And you could already see and on this slide, I put them in red boxes, where we used 100 kilogram as opposed to 50 kilogram in the seedbed. We actually got a better um, establishment of the crops. So starting here, we have the 50 kilograms, so replicate one compared to 100 kilogram replicate one. And you can see the plants per meter squared are much better. And that follows across through the other reps. This one is at the Caton site. Um, not all of the sites established as well as we'd hoped. So going on then a little bit farther, so going right up to 122 days after planting. So looking a bit, you know, right into the future in terms of where they actually established them where they came to. And again, we've got the 50 kilogram and the 100 kilogram reps. And so rep one, rep two, rep three. And you can see here where we've got the 100 kilogram. We've actually got the two different species, Solanum sisim and Solanum scabrum. Sisim in blue, scabrum in sort of orange. Um, but generally, we would say that where we added the additional nitrogen, we actually saw a bigger response. It's not always the way this one sort of like threw a bit of a spanner in the works um, because the system did better uh, at 50 kilogram than 100 kilogram. Um, 
statistically there wasn't any significance so although it does look like the extra nitrogen was in, uh, beneficial to the amount of plants grown actually there is no statistical significance so we have to treat all these results with caution if we then look at the actual ground cover development so we go from days after planting on the bottom axis and we have sisim at 50 kilograms sisim at 100 sisim at uh, sorry scabrum at 50 and scabrum at 100 and looking at that 67 days when we first really start to collect ground cover data <clears throat> you can see the progression that they went through and as they say we've got the 100 scabrum at the top and that had the greatest amount of ground cover 90 percent and that is an average from the three or six reps depending on which site we were looking at this is the canton site which was the best site of the all three of them and you can see that the 50 kilogram compared to the 100 kilogram of scabrum so the 100 kilogram really benefited the ground cover and it's the same with the cisimbria folium the 50 compared to the 100 there wasn't such a big response with the sisim but it's not such a leafy crop um, the scabrum is much what is called a broadleaf crop so it has much better response to nitrogen so not unusual we know that most crops grow really well especially if you give them nitrogen but we had no evidence to suggest how nitrogen would interact with these two crops with these you'd actually say well actually there's probably not a lot of benefit from adding the extra nitrogen for cisimbria folium but there's definitely a significant benefit or substantial benefit i should say from adding it to the scape room um, but overall so we got up to 148 days which is the last um assessment we did so like, like late into november and the crops were still doing well um the scape room at this point there was 148 i went a couple of about a week after that and the scape room had now died off so once it gets frosty the scape room will die whereas the sisim will continue to grow right through the winter so final ground covers you can see the variability between the sites on the left hand side we've got or on my left edgeman ground cover site um you can see we've actually got cisimbria folium was much better at the different repers, uh, replicas that we used than the scabrum whereas at the Caton site the scabrum was always the better crop irrespective of whether or not it had 50 kilograms or 100 kilograms per hectare overall you would say that the Caton site developed the best um the edgeman site was much more variable um there were some issues with the establishment of that um, and it may have been down to the fact that the seabed was slightly fluffier um, and it allowed the, the drill to sink in a bit lower um, the allodyne site we ended at 60 days after planting there was excessive weed growth there and one of the big problems with these crops is currently we have no herbicides that we can use on them the allodyne site was an organic site anyway so we would have not been able to use herbicides one of the key things that we looked at was the biomass though we actually broke down the the plants and had a look to see what the difference was between the plants so we got 122 days after planting we went in and on the left we have solanum cisimbria folium the root architecture there compared to scabrum and again the architecture is completely different scabrum has some substantially more smaller finer roots um, and if we then looked across at the graph to see how that worked out the fresh weight of the fine roots so again we're looking at replicate one replicate two and replicate three 50 kilogram compared to 100 kilogram where we put the 100 kilogram of nitrogen on we had substantially greater fine root development and i think that is going to be exceptionally important for potatoes nematode control since it's the amount of exudates from the roots while they're growing that stimulates PCN uh, to hatch and then to invade these roots. One of the key things then for growers ultimately is why are you growing these crops? Well, you're growing them to try and reduce the population of nematodes in the soil. So basically, it was only studied at the Edgman site. Um, doing things like this is quite expensive. Uh, as many growers will already know you know actually taking samples a lot of samples from soil getting analyzed can be quite um, expensive with a trial we're taking plots um, samples from every single plot 
So the key results then, uh, the non-planted plots showed a decline of around 26% overall on average, but it was from zero to 30. So in some plots where we basically, they were fallow, there was absolutely no change to the PCM population whatsoever, but in some plots it was up to 30%. So this is the control here. You can see overall then we've got this 30%, uh, sorry, 26% on average decline in PCN numbers. So on the y-axis, we have PCN population eggs per gram of soil. And you can see we went from sort of like around about 130 down to just over 85, almost 90. Sysimbria folium um, at 50 kilograms reduced population by about 40%. The 100%, sorry, 100 kilograms of N reduced it by 38%. And again, this is where I think this effect of the roots from Scabrum are probably doing um, a, a different amount of work, if you like. Um, a Scabrum at 50 kilograms a hen, we had a 48% reduction in PCM population. And at 100 kilograms of hen, where we got even greater numbers of roots, we got a 56% reduction. However, I would like to uh, sort of like point out at this point, that the range of populations or the reduction in population from uh, Scabrum and from Sisim was anything from 17 to 85%. So some of the plots in both Sisim and Scabrum reduced the population by 85%, which is a substantial reduction. Um, and this, again, needs further work, to be honest, in order to make sure that um, we can, guarantee, not guarantee, but you know, get closer to that 80% reduction from both these crops. So the conclusions then, um, establishing these crops in North Shropshire in late June with conventional equipment. Uh, we've achieved it now for two years running, uh, but we still need to do some more work to improve that establishment because it was variable across the sites. The use of seed bed nitrogen appears to improve the plants permit squared and improves the cannabis development, especially for the broadleaf scabrum. Uh, both trap crops reduced PCM population to a greater extent than in the fallow plots. So they did some good. They were really quite good in, in up to 85%. Scabrum reduced the PCM soil population to a greater extent than CISIM. Um, again, like I say, it could be that root mass effect that's doing that. Um, both trap crops were shown to have a potential to reduce populations up to 84%. It's without doubt is the key thing. What we're really trying to do is get these crops to establish, to grow really, really well, and then see a significant reduction in PCM. Um, I mean, that's the idea behind it. So basically, the commercial trap crops surrounding the Cape and Trial site, I would class as a very good establishment and growth, and they were sown about six days earlier. Um, but we've still got this issue with early weed control. However, where you actually, we planted this commercial crop, I say six days earlier than the trial, was substantially different. And I'll show you that, but there's an aerial view of it. So this was planted just six days before. We've got a line of scabrum and a bit of headland on there. But this is a 100% ground cover from a crop of Cisimbra folium that was planted just six, six days before the trials. So that's how important the, these timings are. Um, late June, when we planted on the 25th of June, really was the latest you could probably go with these crops. Um, this crop just going out a little bit earlier, and it really is. It's established so well you know, that you, could, you couldn't walk across that field. There, was, there were virtually no gaps in that field. Um, the day on the right-hand side, you can see the scabrum on the headland. And again, we think it's consolidation of the crop that's actually the key issue here. So what I'd like to say at the end is thank you very much to Neil Furnish, Rob Belcher and Nick Taylor over at um, Allardyne. So the three growers that are involved every year, these guys are the, the key ones who are really interested in getting some information about controlling PCN in this way. The whole work was supported by OptiGrow, Harper Adams University, the AHDB Potatoes, which unfortunately no longer exists, and myself as Curious Raven Imagery. I was doing a lot of the assessment work. And thanks, of course, to the Innovative Farmers and the AHD Potatoes for funding some of the work that we've done, um, which hopefully we can find ways to continue following this research. Thank you very much.